Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie, host and head bookologist here at the Get Literate Podcast. I'm a book-loving, notebook-hoarding reader and writer on a mission to change lives one book and one notebook at a time. On this podcast, we explore the power of bookology. What's that? That's the study of books and reading and notebooks and writing mixed with mindful practices and creativity to create lives we love. Here, you'll find episodes exploring the reading and writing life and how they can make our actual lives better. You'll get book recommendations and notebooking prompts around particular themes, and you'll even hear from authors and special guests who can fuel our reading and writing hearts and help us take inspired action in our own daily practices. So grab a notebook and your TBR list and let's get literate. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Get Literate podcast. I'm Stephanie, and I'm here today to talk to you about something that I don't currently do very well in my reading life that I want to. So right now, in this current season of fall 2024, I am participating in two book relays. If you don't know what a book relay is, it's basically a group of people who have decided to pass books back and forth over a specific period of time and leave tracks of their thinking in the book so that we could have a collaborative sort of book club experience without ever meeting in person or at all. It's just this fun way to get some book snail mail and to read collaboratively in a community in a very different way. One of my book relays is an extension of the series of summer workshops I did at Weawaka House in Lake George, New York. We didn't want those to stop. So we are passing one book from person to person to person to keep those bookish connections going all year long. And the second book relay I'm in is part of my Get Literate Patreon book relay. And that one's a little bit bigger. That is a group of us who have each chosen their own book that they want to read and pass along. And then every couple of weeks, we all pay the book we have forward. And we do it again and again and again until at the end of the book relay, we will have read nine books. Eight other people will have read that book with us and left tracks of their thinking in the book so that we can see how each of us took up meaning in those pages. I love book relays, and I am so thrilled to be part of two of them. But here's what I noticed. I am really good at starting the relay. I'm really good at picking a book for a book relay. But what I realized I am not very good at is leaving tracks of my thinking in the book in a way that I think I should. Now, I know there's that should word. We'll we'll pick that apart a little bit later. But in a book relay, you leave tracks of your thinking, and that can be whatever you want it to be. However, you might leave notes in your books, however you might take notes, or if you don't, it's leaving your thinking somehow, some way for the next reader to see how that book impacted you. So there's basically two terms around that kind of work, leaving tracks of your thinking in the book. Some might call it annotation which defined by the dictionary is a note added by way of a comment or an explanation. Or we might call it marginalia, which are marginal notes or embellishments that you write in the margins of the pages. I tend to use both interchangeably, although I think of annotation as more of your basic tracks of thinking and marginalia, some of your more creative or out-of-the-box kinds of tracking your thinking. So this kind of thinking is so important. Number one, in a book relay, it's absolutely critical because in order to see the impact that our books are having on the members, we need to see what they're thinking. We are not meeting in person. We are not touching base yet. That comes at the end. And so the only way we can see how that book mattered to someone else is how they tell us in the pages. Now, I have my own annotation and marginalia practice in the books that I read. I do some things and not others. 
But here's what I found myself doing as I was reading the book. I was reading the book and then thinking about how I should annotate or how I should add marginalia to the pages in ways that maybe was not reflective of what I actually do. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted this to be a true reflection of how I personally would show up to the page, while at the same time acknowledging that doing more of this marginalia work is something that I've been I've been called to do and called to explore, but I just wasn't sure how, or I didn't want to mess up the pages, and I didn't want to leave something there that maybe someone else shouldn't see. All of those same Ah, oh, questions and concerns and blocks that get us from trying something new, that that was working on me in our book, Relay. So I kept reminding myself, it is so important to be active when you are reading a book. You have to read with an open mind and an open heart because what you do when you read determines how much a book will matter to you, right? If you are reading it too quickly or too slowly and not coming to the book often enough, maybe you don't remember it. Maybe if you didn't pay attention while you were reading because you were thinking about something else or you were multitasking, you didn't see those messages and the pages that were meant for you. You didn't get those little nudges. You didn't find those quotes that could really speak to you. So I truly believe what we do before, during, and after a book to keep us active in the experience it matters to how the book will make a difference in our actual lives. And so that's why I wanted to talk about it with you today. I wanted to share a couple of easy practices that you could try when you are reading to make your reading experience more active and therefore more powerful. And I also wanted to hold myself accountable a bit because I'm saying publicly I want to try doing something different in my annotation. And when you say it out loud and you have people who might expect that thing to be different when the book comes to them, well, then I have a better chance of doing that thing. So I want to share five ways that you can experiment with annotation and marginalia in the books you're reading to make yourself more active in the experience, to read with an open mind and heart so that the book can make a difference in your actual life. So I want to start with the things that I do and then move into the things that I don't. So what is the first thing that I do when I read? And this is something I have done forever and I enjoy very, very much. It comes naturally to me. I do not read a book without a sticky note flag or a pack of book darts close by. I have not read a book without those two things in arm's reach in a very long time because I know if I'm holding the sticky note in my hand, if I have one of those book darts in between my fingers, I'm going to read with the expectation that something is going to jump off the page and it's going to matter to me. And if it's going to jump off the page and matter, I want to mark it somehow. So I might not be writing, I might not be thinking through or reflecting on that page why that part's jumping out at me. I simply want to note those sections that are. Sometimes I will go back to them, and if they are quotes I want to hold on to, I will put them in my quote journal. If they are things that are just making me think in a good way or uh, a more frustrating way, right? Books bring up all sorts of things. Then I might bring that to my morning page notebook and journal about it. But basically the sticky note flags and the book darts, they are placeholders so that I can see that when I read that book, that thing jumped out at me. I'm not necessarily noting why, but I'm just noting that it's there. Now, the second thing that I do and you could do too, right? So I'm sharing what I'm doing in hopes that if you don't do it, you'll give it a try. The second thing that I do is use larger sticky notes. I have a whole collection of sticky notes that I use for all sorts of things, but I like using larger sticky notes when I know I want to say more about the piece of the book that got me thinking. 
So if I just put a, a flag or a dart in it, it means I just want to know it spoke to me and I'm good to keep reading. But if it's really sticking with me, if it's something that I want to comment on, if I need to question, if I need to jot down a reminder to myself or just write something else to give that place more context, that's when I get out my larger sticky notes. I've got those little yellow ones and I have some of those bigger colorful square ones. And I even have some of those translucent ones. Those ones are really cool because you can take one of those translucent stickies, stick it right in the book where you're having this thought and write on the sticky note so that the words themselves, you can see through that sticky note to see what they are. And you can jot down a little bit of thinking on the sticky note as well. So I go back and forth between what's available or what I want to use. But the idea is that a simple sticky note can show how you're layering your thinking with the thinking of the book. It's a quick sentence, a quick bullet, a phrase, a question, a reminder. Um, it could even be an image of something. It can be whatever you want, but it takes it a step further from the dart, the book dart or the sticky flag and it layers your thinking on to the page. I am really, really good at doing both of those things. I'm also really good at doing both of those things and then transferring them to my quote notebook or my journal in some way. But honestly, that's where my annotation, a marginalia, it stops. That is my groove. That's my happy place when I'm reading, but I, I do still have a nudge, right? When I scroll social media, and I see people who have really been creative or thoughtful and intentional around the marginalia they put in their books, I get that little hit of envy. I get that little pang of jealousy of, oh, I wish I could do that. Well, I could do that. I could do that. I just don't yet. And so I wanna talk about three other ways that you could add to your marginalia and annotation practice like I am trying to do. So hopefully in the next couple of books that get passed through this book relay, you will see evidence of my growth as an annotator. So one of the easiest things I think I'm going to try that I think all of us could try is to read with a highlighter in our hands. Read with a highlighter in your hands. And you might be thinking, Stephanie, that really is not such a big deal. Like highlighting something in a book, that's not really, you know, grand scale marginalia here. But for me, that is going to take a Herculean feat of effort. I don't know why, but in my fiction books, in the books that I read for personal reasons, I should say, I don't physically mark the pages. And I don't know why, because in my professional world, I mark them up all over the place. I mark them up. I fold their, their corners. I do all sorts of things in those books that I just don't do in the books that I read personally. And I'm trying to think about why. Number one, it's because I tend to borrow many books. And so I don't want to ruin that book and, and pass it along to the next reader all marked up. Although as a reader, I love when that happens because I can see what someone else thought. I also think maybe it's a form of respect that I don't want to graffiti the book, so to speak, that this author put their heart and soul into. I don't want to graffiti it with my words, but I also know that authors love when their books move you so much that you do leave yourself on the page. So you can see I have this, you know, these two angels on either side of my shoulders trying to help me figure out how to, to do this. And I think for me, the simplest way would be to read with a highlighter in my hand. And rather than darting, rather than flagging, I could highlight. I could highlight those pieces that jumped out at me instead. Now, I'm still thinking through my head, I may have to sticky note them too, because if I want to find them later, I love just being able to see the, the ends of those flags and book darts sticking out to find them easiest, but I could always just open up the book, fan the pages, and stop where I see those highlighters. I also could get really part type A <laughs> and have different highlighters for different things, right? Maybe quotes are in yellow because they're my favorite color. Something that I want to write about later could be in purple. 
um, things that are coming up that I disagree with or I don't like and I need to pay attention to, those could be blue. So you get you get the point, but you could color code your reactions to your reading. Okay, next up is to actually do some writing in the margins. So that's in pencil, it's in pen, it's in colored gel pen, it's in ink, it's whatever you want, but it is actually doing some writing. And maybe I shouldn't even say writing. I should say marking of the pages in the white margins, top, bottom, left, and right. Now, what could we put there? When I do use notations, I tend to do a couple of things. I tend to bracket things on the end of the lines if there was something in there I want to pay attention to. So I'll put a bracket on the left and right side of the margin to show that this made me stop and think. Sometimes I underline key phrases, words, entire sentences that are, are mattering to me. I might put a little star at the end of a line to show that's important. I could use other symbols like a question mark if I'm either grappling with the content or I literally have a question that I wish I could ask the author. Um, sometimes I'm jotting down thoughts, right? There was, um, there was a quote in one of the book relay books that I was reading about a woman who was dealing with a particular challenge. And I just happened to write on the post-it note, you know, oh my gosh, I can relate. That's something I could easily just put into the margins. So you could put your thoughts, you could put important notes or ideas that are coming up to you. You could put the themes that are coming up on the page, the actions perhaps you want to take from the book, any nudges that you're feeling, the questions you have, maybe you're rewriting a quote in the margin to make sure it stands out. Maybe you're sketching, maybe you're doodling, maybe you're drawing, right? You're basically putting these little notes to self. And I think that's the phrase I'm going to use to make it more personal and easier for me to do this, right? It's not fancy annotation or marginalia, even though I love saying that word. It's basically just a note to self. And if I happen to pass the book on to someone else, well, I have to remind myself that I love seeing those in other people's books. Maybe they will too. Or I just give them a warning that I have left tracks of my own thinking in the books and do they still want it? Now, you could also jot down some things on the inside cover or the back of the book. I learned this from Modern Mrs. Darcy, aka Ann Bogle who on the inside cover of the book notes where she got the book, where she was reading it, when she was reading it, why she was reading it. Some of that introductory information to remind us why we felt called to this book. And then in the back cover of the book, she'll jot down things like notes for her online book review, other books that remind her of this book as if she wanted to create a book flight, or people that she might pay the book forward to, or at least recommend it to. I've never taken notes like this on the inner and back covers of the books, other than to just write my name in it so everyone knows that I was there. And this really appeals to me. I feel like this could be a baby step into marginalia and notes to self on the inner side of the page. So I've got one more. We've talked about reading with sticky note flags or darts. We've talked about reading with larger sticky notes that we write on. Then we made the giant leap to marking up the pages by reading with highlighters or writing with whatever utensil you prefer in the margins. But I want to remind us that there is one other way to do it. And this, this was sparked with a conversation I had with a bookish friend who was also talking about her annotation for our book relay. And it's this, technically by definition, annotation, the marginalia, does happen on the physical pages of the book. But that doesn't mean that that is the only place where that kind of thinking and notes to self can come. Maybe you read with your notebook right next to you, 
And rather than marking up the book, you are marking up your own personal pages, right? Maybe you are reading with your Google Keep app open or your Google Docs app open or your Remarkable Notebook open and you're jotting down your thoughts there. There is something special, I think, to leaving your thinking literally on the pages of the books that you read. But I also think there's something special and convenient about having one place where you leave your tracks of thinking about the book. It is much easier to scroll through a notebook with all of this to see who you were as a reader at that time and all of the things you wanted to take away from the book. It's easier to do that in a single notebook or a single document than it is to go to your bookshelf and remember where you put that book <laughs> and then go through and find the tracks of your thinking if you would like. So the fifth option is to do all this work, but perhaps you do it in a separate place and then you just either leave it there or maybe you rip it out of your notebook and you tuck it into the book or you print it and you tuck it into the book. There's no one right way to do these kinds of notes to self as you are reading this kind of annotation or marginalia. You just need to choose something that feels right for you. And then maybe you nudge yourself to be a little bit braver and to do the next step, which is what I am attempting to do. Now, I do want to note one thing. If this is something that you do or you want to try or you want to broaden your practice, you need the tools. So my top recommendation is to create a little pencil pouch. Well, don't create the pencil pouch. Get a pencil pouch. Get a little basket, a little bin, a little box, whatever little thing appeals to you and fill it with what you need. I have a little pencil pouch. As I mentioned, my brother and sister-in-law gave it to me for my birthday. It says, I'm a planner. I plan things. And in there are my favorite pencils, my favorite purple pens, some sticky flags, some book darts, some bigger sticky notes. And now I will be adding a couple of highlighters as well. And that pencil pouch goes wherever my book goes. So it's often in my purse right with my book or I throw it into my work bag right with my book so that when I'm reading, I have the tools I need to do this kind of active thinking with the book. Now, if I don't have it, no big deal. I'm still going to read anyway, right? Maybe I come back to it and I, I sticky note some places later or maybe I don't. But I have just found having those tools close by makes this practice easier to make your own. Um, it also makes it a habit. And so this kind of reading just becomes more natural. Now, one last thing before I close the episode. What I love that a practice like this can do, whether you call it annotation, marginalia, notes to sell for my reading journal, it gives us a glimpse into who we were and the kind of person we were and what our life was like at the moment we read that book. So imagine in five years or 10 years, you're cleaning off your bookshelf and you take out one of your books that you notice has a bunch of book darts and sticky notes in, and you just sit there and you browse it. And you think, what did that past version of me find important? What did she find useful? What quotes were jumping out at her? What was her life like back then when she read that book? I feel like it could be such a wonderful archive of not just our reading life, but of our actual lives as well. And revisiting those things helps us to reflect on our growth over time and just reminisce and see how important those books were and getting us from who we were then to where we were now. So if I haven't convinced you, I hope that last little bit did right there. So there you have it. Five ways that you can bring annotation or marginalia or notes to self into your reading life. You know I want to hear what you think about this episode and what you do as a reader as you read. So as always, you can head to alitlife.com and find the show notes for this episode and leave me a comment there. You can find me on social media at Afanito Lit and either comment on the post for this episode or send me a direct message. 
And as always, you can click that little audio message button in your podcast platform and send me a message there as well. And if this kind of work lights you up, you really like thinking about ways to make your reading life, make your actual life better, then join me inside my Grow a Restorative Reading Practice, where we talk about all these kinds of things and more. You can also join my Patreon. Just five bucks a month gets you an extra episode, a book club, you heard about the book relay, and live events coming up too. Either way, thank you for listening to this episode. If you are in my private communities, thank you so much for being there already. And if not, I hope you'll consider joining us. We are a pretty wonderful group of readers. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. And I'll see you inside the next episode of the Get Literate podcast. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Get Literate podcast. You'll find links to all the books, resources, and ideas mentioned in the show notes and at alitlife.com. And if you want more, you might like to join my Patreon community. There, you'll find additional inspiration for your reading and writing life, like bonus podcast episodes, book calendars, monthly book clubs, notebooking inspiration, live events, giveaways, and more. It's only $5 a month and you get instant access to all of the previous content too. Learn more at getliterate.co. And one more thing, if you love what you listen to today, please take a moment to rate and review the podcast or take a screenshot of the episode and text it to a friend. This helps the podcast grow and it builds our bookish and notebookish community too. Thanks for listening.